And we have a great panel today filled with a lot of expertise and really excited to hear uh, their presentations um, uh, throughout the day. Uh, so first we'll have John Young, who is a practice lead for Esri Real Property and Facilities Management Solutions. As a practice lead, John is responsible for developing and growing the adoption of Esri Solutions for Real Property and Facility Management. He's been building and supporting the practice for the past eight years, working with organizations spanning all levels of government, as well as higher education, commercial, and healthcare organizations. Uh, certainly a great experience and really excited to learn uh, from John today. Uh, we'll also, have, uh, joining John, we'll have uh, Bill Barron. He's the Chief Executive Officer at Penn Bay Solutions. And as the CEO of Penn Bay Solutions, he is focused on strategy, finance, and business development for Penn Bay. Uh, he's worked in the banking industry in Hong Kong and London for 24 years, and he brings a strong uh, strategic and financial planning and operations expertise to Bill, uh, to Penn Bay's uh, business model. So, Bill, it's great to have you, and we're, we're excited uh, to have you join us today. And we'll also have uh, Benton Yetman, and he's the uh, Director of Strategic uh, Technology uh, at Penn Bay. So in that role, he has more than uh, 10 years of experience developing geospatial technology solutions for a diverse set of clients. Uh, he has a background in GIS and systems architecture, where he specializes in business development for the public safety arena, and it works in markets in the U.S. and also in the Middle East. Uh, so a great uh, panel here today filled with a lot of expertise. We'll also be doing a live demo for you as well, too. Uh, so we've got a lot of fun things here planned. And uh, with that, uh, John, I'm going to pass it over to you. Great. Well, thank you very much, Pat. Let me go in advance to our first slide in our presentation. Uh, as mentioned, I'm John Young with Esri, and on behalf of myself, my colleagues Bill Barron and Ben Yetman, uh, who are with Esri Partner Penn Bay Solutions, uh, we'd like to thank everyone very much for joining us today. And you know, we're excited to be here uh, to share with you uh, the results of nearly 10 years of combined effort and success helping federal, state, and local government agencies improve the management and protection of, of real property. Uh, we're here because we understand the challenges, uh, the realities facing real property management professionals. We understand the need to do more with less because budgets are not getting any fatter. Uh, and we understand that a, a change to the status quo is needed, that it's time for a new capability, that it's time for a force multiplier, or a capability that when added to the current solutions dramatically increases the probability of mission success. Now, I think we can all agree that the built environment has a profound effect on our ability to work, to work safely and effectively. We can also agree that governments manage quite a diversity of real property assets, both indoors and outdoors, uh, including installations, some of you campuses, bases, buildings, laboratories, and the grounds, utilities, networks, and supporting infrastructure, as well as things like, like fleet vehicles. One only has to imagine the federal government without these assets to understand that they are indispensable in supporting U.S. objectives around the globe. In other words, you know, these facilities are absolutely mission critical, as are the people that manage, operate, and protect them. So in this presentation and demonstration, set of demonstrations today, we will look at GIS-based or GIS-enhanced real property management technology and how it can help government as well as non-government real property professionals significantly improve mission critical business processes and in three key areas, portfolio management, operations and maintenance, and safety and security. And I, I think we can all agree that governments own a lot of real property. Uh, many of you have extensive portfolios that contain strategic, complex, uh, expensive assets uh, and as an example, uh, just take a look at some of these, these fun facts. You know, with regard to the federal government's uh, portfolio, you can see that you know, they own, federal government owns uh, hundreds of thousands of buildings, uh, tens of millions of acres of land, and with operating costs annually in excess of $30 billion, right? And you have groups like the Federal Protective Service who have to actually protect over 9,500 buildings and facilities, and that receive nearly or over half a million calls for services annually. I mean, these are big numbers, right? And managing these portfolios certainly comes with its share of challenges. So, like you, we realize and share in the understanding that these challenges certainly exist. Uh, as just mentioned, there's a lot of real property on the books. 
in the case of buildings, some of it is grossly underutilized. Uh, it's costing the taxpayers billions of dollars annually. Uh, there are certainly plenty of rules, regulations, mandates, reports requiring improvements. There are ones that call for the outright right sizing of a portfolio, you know, those that stress maximizing use of building space, uh, those that stress providing environmentally safe and secure places to work, as well as minimizing impacts in general on the planet. And all this in the face of ever-increasing vulnerability to natural and human-caused threats. And interestingly, you know, there's plenty of helpful information that can be used to support improvements. However, obstacles and complexity do exist. You know, this information can sometimes be difficult to use because it's trapped in systems or silos that are hard to access, access, or not easily integrated with other decision support tools. I mean, fundamentally, this inhibits efficient data management as well as introducing as well as introducing risk. Again, it's time for a force multiplier. It's time for geographic information systems or GIS. In fact, it's likely or your organization may already have access to Esri's GIS products. But before we continue, let us do this. Let's go to our first polling question. Great. No, John, that was a great, uh, a great intro there. And some of the stats that you're reading were just amazing, just the size of, you know, what government's managing their facilities, you know, protecting 9,500 facilities of 30 million a year, just crazy numbers, and it really shows the importance of a uh, strong facilities management plan. But, yeah, like John said, we have a poll up here for our audience. Uh, we'd love you to take it. So the question we have here for you is, are you facing some of these strategic challenges in your organization? If yes, which ones? Uh, so just go ahead and you can click uh, one of those uh, answers that, that fits uh, for you there. And, uh, John, I actually have a question uh, uh, for you that came in that I'd like to ask you. Um, so the question came in is that, uh, do you find that a common initial question or requirement from real property managers is understanding where all their assets are located or simply seeing locations of assets on a map? Uh, is that something you see or, or what's, your take, what's your take on that? Well, that's, well, that's actually, believe it or not, that's a really good question. Uh, we find that is uh, commonly an initial question. Um, for most, if not all, organizations, their first step is to use GIS to actually verify and validate location information. In other words, addresses or latitude and longitude coordinates so they can be accurately placed on a map. And I should note that you know, the business continuity or risk analysis is usually the initial uh, use case that's actually driving that need. Interesting. No, that's a great, great insights, and I think they really help out our audience understand. So let's take a look at some of the poll results and see what uh, what we got here. It's challenges. So it looks like the top one is uh, demand for new efficiencies. So interesting. So I think there's some interesting findings here too. So we have uh, demand for new efficiencies. Uh, closely followed by information uh, silos slowing progress. So great. So uh, with that, John, I think uh, I'll pass it back to you. you can uh, keep on moving forward here. Sure. Thanks a lot, Pat. You know, it's, this is interesting looking at these poll numbers. I think it's here, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's really need uh, or under, uh, underscores the need for a force multiplier. Um, and we need a technology that can help break the status quo for real property management, if you will one that helps us meet and exceed goals and mandates, ones that we alluded to earlier, so that we can increase these efficiencies, improve risk mitigation, um, reduce risk, et cetera. And so what about this thing? What about, a, what about a force multiplier or tools or capabilities that can help us, can help us, the, the folks on the line that are working every day, to, uh, to amplify their efforts to produce more and improved output? Well, we believe a, a technological force multiplier will help real property professionals get more done with less effort, right, while extending the value of traditional real property management software and systems and, and data they're already using today. We do believe GIS is the technological force multiplier for real property and facility management. And as you can see here on this slide, GIS-enabled systems help integrate enterprise systems of record. They provide mapping and powerful location analytics that help with geospatial pattern and trend detection. 
and it all scales the levels of detail. So from a single space inside of a building to a global portfolio of building assets. But say what, rather than um, go through a variety of benefits, I think it's best to show you some real world examples. Um, but before we move to some of these live examples, why don't we do this? Why don't we go ahead and go to our next polling question, Pat? Great. Yeah, so uh, great, John. And now we got another quick uh, polling question here for everyone. Are you using GIS in your real property or facility management practice? Uh, just a yes or no. And so while everybody's answering that question, uh, John, another another good question came in here uh, for you that I wanted to uh, throw your way. Uh, do you do you have to have a GIS practice or GIS professionals in your organization to take advantage of this technology for facility management? Uh, that is a good question. Um, you know, GIS at Esri has a deep history of development and maturity, you know, so over 40 years. And it uh, kind of goes without saying that there's an extensive uh, GIS professional community around the world. But uh, a major emphasis at Esri for several years now has been to make GIS or just simply mapping and location analytics uh, more mainstream, so easy to access, easy to use. And in fact, we have seen a significant increase in the adoption of GIS by real property and facility management organizations that have never used GIS before and were able to get up and running quickly. And, you know, we're, we're seeing this adoption across all levels of government as well as in commercial and educational institutions. And uh, this regardless, actually, uh, of the size of the organization or their portfolios. Interesting. No, it's a really interesting uh, insight how GIS is spreading across the entire, kind of the entire agency and just so many different applications of it, too, for, for professionals. Um, so let's pull up the results here and see what people are people are saying. Uh, so it's a, almost an even split. Um, you know, if uh, they're using GS in the real property for facility management, we're also 50-50 here. So it's really interesting. Um, before uh, I throw it back to you, John, I just want to remind everybody: um, please uh, make sure to check out the resources. Um, you know, right within your council. If you have questions, keep them coming. We've got some good ones in here already, um, but we'd love to have some more for a Q and A here as well. So, John, uh, back to you. Uh, thanks, Pat. Uh, wow, so that's that is great. Uh, an even split here. So, so looks like several of you are, are certainly using GIS, and perhaps others here are exploring the option of using GIS. But either way, I think you're really going to be interested in, in some of these things that we're going to present here in just a moment. Um, I, I do want to quickly just call out that, that Esri's GIS or Geographic Information Systems uh, is called our solution offerings are called ArcGIS. Um, as mentioned during the the poll, we have been building and deploying our technologies customers around the world for over 40 years. Uh, the ArcGIS is a platform technology that can be deployed in a variety of IT environments. So whether it's on-premises or pure multi-tenant cloud or a number of hybrid scenarios. Uh, it's secure. It's aligned with leading compliance requirements like those of FISMA and FedRAMP. Uh, it's on Esri's GSA schedule. Uh, in fact, the RGIS platform is being used by real property and facility managers across federal, state, and local governments today. Um, and as you can see from this graphic, uh, the RGIS platform is interoperable with other systems of record, so other real property and facility management or asset management systems of record, as well as as-built data sources. And when integrated, it delivers mapping and analytic services to a variety of end-user decision support apps, so everything from smart devices and web browsers and as well as desktops. Uh, it also comes with a variety of facility and real property specific templates to help you get started really quickly. And this actually brings us uh, to uh, the focal point for our demonstrations and, and showing uh, and going to moving over to our provider and main partner for GIS enabled real property and facility management solutions. Uh, this is Penn Bay Solutions. And uh, we want to have them show you some examples uh, using their product in Vision. So I'd like to now turn it over to Bill Barron and Ben Yetman so, from Penn Bay. So, Bill. Thanks, John, and thank you all for attending. I want to take a brief moment to introduce you to Envision's suite of solutions for facilities management and those that protect these facilities. And first and foremost, InVision is designed to solve business problems, leveraging the power of GIS and existing systems and data. As we like to call it, we have to serve the silos because the silos that exist today are trying to do the job of the day. 
both inside and out, and we want to extend the power of GIS to them. At the same time, we want to support the strategic goals we've already heard about today, which is save money, save time, save lives in a holistic manner uh, with economies of scale that leverages authoritative data and interoperating with existing systems. For those of you who are not familiar with InVision, it's a COTS offering that's subscription and a web-based technology that is on PEMBE's GSA schedule and lives and breathes on top of the ESRI ArcGIS uh, platform. At its core, InVision focuses on the location of people, places, and things, and the workflows that exist to, man to manage and to protect those facilities across the facility's life cycle. As John described, we delineate uh, this life cycle into three InVision modules, portfolio, operations, uh, and safety and security. What you will see today are examples of all of those modules, the first of which is InVision Insight, which relates to portfolio or real property management. This provides the geospatial tools that helps portfolio managers meet organizational reporting objectives, as well as requirements for data and the right sizing of real property. Features are as simple as an inventory of your assets, where is your stuff, as they call it. It also has features that allow analysis for consolidation or expansion of a portfolio to serve uh, the mission and responds to directives and mandates that may be extended to you. And finally, it provides you a reporting and displaying of the progress that's made against those mandates. And Benton will do a, a demonstration of that here shortly. The second module we talk about is InVision FM, which addresses a wide range of operational challenges. With these tools, Federal real property managers are better enabled to manage occupancy, space, assets, and the infrastructure at any scale, whether it's the room, the floor, the building, the campus, the entire portfolio, or across the globe, significantly aiding the reduction of real property lifecycle costs and the time and effort for those who manage and protect them. Examples of that are space, assets, lease, and the who, what, where, and the information related to those issues, and most importantly, with our new release, a mobile inspection and viewing uh, tool that will leverage uh, the tools available to those in that practice. And finally, the third module uh, Benton will be demonstrating today is InVision Secure, which addresses public safety and securities. This is focused on strategic analysis, planning, response, again, at the right scale, uh, so people can author and share that information securely. It also allows people to leverage their public safety assets like CCTV, access control, event management, at the right scale uh, for the right people at the right time. Within and across all three Envision modules, we are focused on answering and viewing the right question in the right business context with the right data at the right scale. We are always leveraging existing data and systems. We're not trying to displace anybody. It allows people to view, share, edit in a secure and authoritative framework, and ultimately to gain the economies of scale for you to deliver on your message, on your mission. And perhaps the best way to understand these concepts you've heard today from John, and InVision in particular, is for Ben to run you through a few examples. Benton? Thank you, Bill, and good afternoon, everyone. We're gonna spend some time this afternoon looking at uh, the concepts you just heard about in action. And I think we'll start with this graphic. Part of the reason GIS is such a force multiplier is because you're able to use the same foundation data across the whole life cycle for all these different users. So as you see these demos today, just take note of that. You're going to see a lot of the same underlying data being used for very different uh, business purposes. So let's get started at the beginning with portfolio. There are a number of challenges that are common to organizations at this level. Um, doing a uh, portfolio inventory, selecting new sites, understanding how well your facilities are performing against your mission, going out and doing audits. And as simple as it sounds, knowing where your facilities are is really the first step in managing any portfolio. Now, this information can be found in uh, oftentimes in spreadsheets, oftentimes in you know, an address and a lease doc, 
for some of you that uh, about half of you that have GIS probably in shape files or in a geodatabase, oftentimes in other systems. So GIS provides a means to bring it all together to create a comprehensive inventory and in doing so uh, verify and validate what you have and where it is and then start to improve on it. So it's important to note as we jump out to our first demo here that this is really applicable at any scale. So it could be that uh, as a university, you only really have one campus, and that's your scale. As a city, you're interested in the citywide portfolio. Or as a federal agency, you're interested nationally or even globally. So this, what we're going to look at today, really spans all those different scales. And to start, we're going to look at uh, the process of creating that comprehensive inventory, bringing all that data through uh, spreadsheets, through uh, lease documents from other systems, into one place where we can start to uh, see it all, understand it all, and go through a process of removing duplicates, sort of validating these, and then adding additional information. So we're starting here. This is actually New York City's real property inventory. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. We'll look uh, a slightly larger extent. With such a, a large uh, inventory, it's really important to be able to analyze and understand this information in ways that the uh, departments and the city at large can make sense of it all. So one of the first things that you'll notice Jess does is lets you uh, understand what's going on behind those locations, really taking the depth of information for each and making it really easy to understand. So here we're going to look at our real property inventory by the agency that's associated with managing it. Or we could change and say we want to look at those that are owned versus leased. And we can start to understand all of our leased properties and expiration dates. We can drill down into any of these properties and start to uh, see relationships. So here we can see the parcel associated with that. And as we add building footprints or other data sets, we can start to see how these all relate. And we can use these tools to actually update information as part of that assessment and inventory. So if we wanted to update our status from this is new and unreviewed, so reviewed and approved, we can do that through these tools without having to le learn a sort of complex desktop application. And as this data gets better and better, we can start to build on top of it, as you'll see next, and, and do sort of scenarios and run analyses. But right out of the gate, once we know where all of our real property is, we can start doing some pretty interesting things with reporting or doing interesting selections. So if we wanted to select every property in that area, we can see there's uh, over 1,000. We could drill down through them if we wanted. Or as a manager, we might want to run a report. So we come up with a report, and we can look at that lease versus own. Of course, that had some unfinished property in it. Let's do this for a department. So we go to the Department of Sanitation. We can actually drill down through a tree of who is operating and potentially owns what, run an agency summary report, and this will roll up hey, just show me everything by this agency that's leased versus owned, what's the area associated with it, um, and really build out any other reports or analyses we want. So by just getting your information all into one place and bringing together spreadsheets, information from other systems or leases, you can start to develop this uh, single view of your portfolio that you can then use to uh, do what we're going to show in the, the next demo here. So once you have that foundation in your GIS, you can use the power of GIS to analyze and understand how all that real property aligns with your mission. And depending on who you are, your mission is probably going to be very different. Uh, but it's really applicable to any organization. So if you're a city, um, your mission and related to facilities is you know, we need to deliver city services based on where they're needed. If you're a school, you need to align your facilities with uh, student populations, or you know, a transit um, a transit agency needs to align infrastructure with demand and also recurring maintenance. What we're going to look at in this demo is 
uh, how the Veterans Health Administration achieved their mission of delivering health care to enrollees across the United States. Now, this is their uh, real property inventory, and because they have this in GIS, they can use this to create really interesting scenarios to help play out how to adjust their facility portfolio to achieve their mission and make sure they're meeting all their objectives. So you'll notice over on the right, we have a whole bunch of other layers of information that come into play as we start uh, some of these workflows. We can, of course, interact with any of these locations, learn a little bit more about each of them. We can look at uh, partner organizations or other, in this case, healthcare, other service providers that may go into some of these analyses. Some of the things you're not seeing behind the scenes are actually all of the uh, locations, resident locations of enrollees. So there's complex drive time analysis that goes on to understand how well each of these is serving uh, enrollees. And they use this to do iterative planning. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open up these different scenarios. And I have a scenario here that's going to allow us to do sort of a what-if scenario for a given area of interest. Now, I've sort of pre-created this one. I'm looking at an area of interest, which is a sub-market in Texas. We could change that to look at an entire state. We could look all the way down uh, if we wanted to at a very small area of interest. So we define where it is we need to affect change or understand and analyze impact. Next, we can adjust the, the target of this analysis. So do we want to see how this affects a certain part of our constituents, or how does it affect uh, priority groups or people by age or uh, certain stakeholders? And then we can go in and actually start looking at how to create and remove candidates. So you'll notice here I have uh, two sites that I, I saw are very close together. So I came in, clicked this one, and like you'll see here, I said, you know what, I want to decommission this site in this current scenario. That has that red X. I also went out and said, you know what, based on some of these other data layers I looked at, rurality and a current drive time ban, I think there might be a need to have a site out here by Kimball in Kimball County. So I created that. Uh, you can do it from a bunch of different ways through a you know, drawing it, importing a CSV, or uh, other ways of bringing in information, but I've created that new candidate. Then what happens is once I have my scenario set, I can come in here and analyze the impact, or if I wanted to, I could actually show uh, sort of immediately the drive time bans and the impact that, that scenario has on uh, coverage. And I'll switch to satellite so you can see those bands a little bit better. So we can see our new coverage drive time bands. We can see existing. And when we do analyze impact, this is going to take all of that data behind the scenes, create analysis, and return it to us to make decisions with. So I'm going to leave you on kind of a click thing where I'm not actually going to uh, do the analysis today, but try to imagine what that might look like with your facilities against your mission. What kinds of questions are you trying to answer? So next up is operations, and operations is certainly the longest and most costly segment of the life cycle because it lasts so long, and there are many common challenges that are experienced throughout it. Most people have a need to manage space, things like leases. Others have ADA compliance requirements, need to do planning, need to understand uh, condition and energy and capital projects. There's a lot we could look at today. But I thought we'd focus on just uh, a couple related to uh, starting with space and then uh, looking at lease. And we're going to start here like we've done with uh, some of the other demonstrations, really at the portfolio level. So here we are uh, looking at a distributed portfolio across the U.S. But when we get into space and other things that take us indoors, very quickly we get to um, – the, the campus or the building level. Here we are at a individual campus, and one of the things we can start doing is visualizing information 
real real time information either from GIS or other systems that help us understand what's going on. So here we'll look at real time occupancy of these buildings, or maybe condition or uh, the type of building that we're looking at. We can change all of these different view buys based on who the user is to help them access that information very quickly. And anytime we get to an individual building, we can drill down inside it to continue the workflow. So here we'll go to uh, the first floor of building Q, and we can do the same kinds of things there. So we can go look at our space by type, or we could look at our space by what department's assigned to it. Uh, maybe the security access is what we're most interested in. And we can also make sure that um, available spaces show up along with how many spaces are available. This lets us drill even further into each space, seeing all the information behind it, employees related if we want to. We can update uh, any of the attributes. We could assign a new employee if we wanted to do that. This is really when we go beyond the site level representation, get into bringing other data sets in, data sets like CAD and BIM, scan drawings that help us really understand at a granular level all of our facilities. And we can do that you know, for a single building at a time, or if you have multiple buildings that you're interested in seeing, maybe on a campus setting, you can actually look across more than one at a single time. So we'll turn on uh, a given floor level for the entire campus, and we'll see uh, all those building interiors turn on. So GIS can go as far down as you need to to manage information, whether it's for space or assets at the floor level. And then it can go also back up to help you understand the big picture. What are my building utilization or campus utilization or entire portfolio utilization look like from a space perspective? The second thing we'll look at here is uh, lease. So lease is very similar. It starts at a very high level where we could see our entire portfolio and understand where all of our leases are, any leases that have critical end dates coming up. We're going to zoom right back down to this one. This, you'll notice, is the same underlying facility data we saw before. But in this case, we have uh, lease information on top of it. So we can come in. We can open up our lease record. We can see there are two spaces that are related to this lease, so we can actually drill down and see which spaces or collections of spaces or collections of parcels and other items are related to that lease. And we can also attach or look at comments related to this lease information. So again, it drills all the way down into the, the details, if we want, inside buildings, but can roll back up to the portfolio level to help us manage uh, the big picture. Lots of other ways that people use GIS to not just use the data they have in GIS, but also to extend or integrate other systems for, uh, for looking at things like work order management. So this is uh, from our friends at the University of Redlands, where they've actually integrated their work order management system so they can see every day where they have in-progress work orders. They can look historically at the number of work orders they're doing per building or space, the cost associated with each, look for trends over time. Other folks like the National Institutes of Health are using GIS for all kinds of operations management, everything from uh, building utilization to redlining to environmental concerns, understanding uh, recycling, utilities, going above ground, below ground, indoors and outdoors, and again, rolling that all the way up if needed to the portfolio level to see operating status or make big decisions. One of the other things that GIS does particularly well is bring together data from different information silos into one place. So what you're seeing here is an example of a, uh, an executive dashboard that's bringing information from uh, a part of the agency that deals with leases, a part of the agency that deals with uh, projects, capital projects. And while you can see the roll-up of each of these, you can also click through 
to drill down into that same level of detail that we were looking at uh, in Envision previously. So I can go from the big picture. Now we can see there are four places that have leases expiring in the next 90 days. And for each of those, if we wanted to click on one, this will take us literally right down to that location where we can uh, drill into any related information, see information about the site, and learn more detail if we're interested in that. So next up, we have uh, safety and security. And safety and security is, uh, is a really interesting realm uh, from a risk analysis perspective, understanding trends over time and how they may affect our facilities and real property differently, looking at those risks and then turning them into pre-plans, building out physical security, all our door locks, alarms, CCTV cameras, using all of that rolled up as a common operational tool or looking at continuity of operations. And then you, using it to understand uh, those items in our real property and facilities that might not be there all day every day. They might be related to a special event and they're a, a tent that gets put up for you know, a month, but still very important to know about from a public safety perspective. So I'll just show you a couple things here on the public safety side, when we start talking about modeling physical security, we're taking the same data that's used to help manage space across the portfolio and making that available to security planners so they can see all the locations of their CCTV cameras, their door alarms. They can see integrated uh, live feeds of those alarm status and buildings represented by which alarm or which buildings have alarms. They can start looking at uh, the big picture, real-time location of resources and other things across campuses. If there ever is an incident, this is really interesting, they can look at the area of impact of that incident. And this area of impact pulls up a set of reports that reach back to the facility side to show who and what are in each of these buildings, contact information, and any critical equipment that's affected by this or may be impacted by it. So the crosswalk between public safety and facilities is really unique and enables a lot of uh, data that usually wouldn't be available on the safety and security side to be pulled out for real-time decision making. And of course, that also includes uh, looking at sort of command center views and the ability to take what's typically a pretty sophisticated set of desktop systems for launching things like CCTV cameras or understanding other intelligence feeds and making it so simple that anybody can click on a camera, click the launch feed, and see in the command center what that camera can see, understanding the view sheds related to it. So next, I wanted to show you um, a little bit of the work that will bring us full circle back to, uh, to New York City and that real property inventory that we started with. And I wanted to show you some of the stuff that the, the team uh, over at FDMY, Captain Brady and the GIS unit are doing over there. Really interesting work and uh, work that they're doing across day-to-day -day events. So this is a, a, a tool that the fire department in New York actually uses to upload and georeference emergency action plans for the entire city. So all classy buildings, all high-rise buildings, they're using this to collate all of those into a map-based application so they can drill down anytime there's an incident. They're using it for things like events which bring uh, new elements of unfamiliarity into uh, uh, the built environment. So they can see at any time given current events. Most of the events you see here are uh, related to the upcoming All-Star Game. And I heard a rumor that uh, there's a concert coming up with uh, Rihanna. And so 
they're able to search if somebody calls in and says, hey, we have an incident at the Rihanna concert. They can search. They can find it. This takes them down where they can actually open up their pre-planned details. They can understand the, uh, the pre-planned elements, whatever those may be in this case, traffic stops. They can see information about the venues and all the, the links related to that if they wanted to see those. So they're able to use this as a planning tool to understand the ever-changing built environment and how it affects their real property. And just in the same way that we started with the locations of all the real property in, in New York City, they can use this same set of tools to understand and model or analyze those over time. So if they wanted to look at those um, things over time, looking at them via heat maps or by size of attendance or uh, even if we have an incident that comes through and they need to model an area of impact, they're able to see what real property is potentially impacted by things like that blizzard that sort of fizzled for us the other day. So I know we just stepped through a lot of examples, but it's important to understand that each of the examples we looked at used uh, the same underlying data, and you can too. You can leverage those across your organization, across different business users. And that's really the force multiplier that GIS brings to the table, doing more with a single data set and helping save time, money, and lives. So with that, I will uh, hand it back over to my colleague, John. John, over to you. Okay. Let's advance here. Thank you very much, Bill and Ben. These were really great examples. Um, I think it definitely underscores, uh, makes it clear that our GIS and vision uh, can be a force multiplier. As mentioned earlier, government agencies, that meaning state, local, federal, uh, and federal, are actively taking advantage of GIS as part of their real property and facility management business practices. And, you know, this is just a, an additional slide that shows a sample or diversity of organizations that have pretty extensive real property portfolios, I think we'd all agree, and, and how they're actually using it at multiple scales or levels of detail um, to provide, you know, mission-critical um, uh, impact in their organization. And, uh, and in each case, uh, integrating with the existing real property or facility management uh, systems of record. All right, so we've walked through some really great examples. I think it's time to go to our last polling question, Pat. Great. All right, yeah, let's pull up this uh, last poll here uh, for everyone. Uh, so no, it was a great demo and really enjoyed uh, watching it. And just to remind everybody, we are going to be sending out an on-demand uh, version of this training, so you can uh, rewatch uh, kind of at your leisure to or share with a friend as well if you want them to see it. Uh, but let's uh, look, take a look at this last poll question. So the question we got for you all is, uh, where are your key challenges? Uh, so if you could just click, um, you know, ones where your key challenges are, and we'll bring up the results here in a moment. But while we're doing that, uh, John, there's a lot of great, uh, a lot of great questions came in here, but there is one that I do want to ask you now. Um, so an attendee asked, uh, so where in, in an organization does GIS usually get started? Uh, we saw these great examples um, that Benton was showing us, but how do, where does it kind of get started within uh, an organization? Oh, thanks, Pat. Oh, okay, so the short answer I would say these days is actually in a variety of different departments. Uh, I mean, this usually, I mean, so this could either be, you know, folks at the portfolio level or in operations or in safety and security. Uh, it usually does get back to the initial business problem or challenge that's come through, right? Um, mm -hmm. In some cases, it's the public safety or campus security department. Uh, and this kind of relates back to business continuity and risk analysis that I mentioned a little earlier. Um, or oftentimes, it's actually the real property managers themselves or the portfolio managers that are wanting to track portfolio performance, right? They want to understand very quickly the, the, um, the, the best performers or the, uh, the worst performers. Uh, and then, you know, a new trend that, that Ben alluded to that we're seeing a good bit is actually at the facility operational level where folks are wanting to do things like track work orders by type or frequency of occurrence or severity. Um, these are all, you know, departments uh, with challenges that we're seeing um, uh, 
and ones that are getting started with GIS. And you know, regardless of one's entry point, uh, it's easy to get started and, and make the technology available across departments. Well, great. Well, uh, John, thanks so much for addressing that, that question from our attendee. And uh, let's uh, pull up the results here. So here we go. So where are your key challenges? And it looks like the leading one is right at 48% operations and maintenance. I think kind of evenly, just about evenly split with the other three of the uh, portfolio, real property management, safety and security management, and then uh, all the above too. So interesting. So those are uh, some interesting results uh, to take a look at. So we got a few more uh, slides here to get through, then we'll do the Q&A. Uh, keep the questions coming, and uh, we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, so, John, uh, uh, back to you. Great. Thanks, Pat. Uh, it is actually interesting to see a pretty, pretty even spread uh, in terms of the diversity of challenges across the group. Uh, I, I think it does a couple things. It, it understates both the observation that facilities are indeed mission critical, um, as well as the need for uh, a force multiplier, a technological force multiplier. Um, it does beg the question then uh, on how you get started, right? How do you get started using GIS in your real property or facility management business practice? And you know, regardless of your of your primary challenge or collection of those, Esri, what I can tell you is Esri and Inbase Solutions have an option that fits. Um, and this could come uh, at a number of levels, right? So, uh, you know, we've got the, the funny or fun analogies here, but uh, uh, the initial um, crawl, if you would, if you will, would be an initial operating capability or proof of concept, right? Or one where um, it helps to very quickly evaluate uh, what the potential return on investment will be, but at a small scale. So taking uh, a little bit of data from several different uh, sources um, using the integrated power of GIS and very quickly bringing it into a template or a simple campus viewer and uh, usually with the intent of, of hitting one um, main use case. Perhaps it is uh, safety and security um, or one like that. Uh, then there is the, the walk, right, or number two. Um, we oftentimes find it's important are important to folks to integrate GIS or, or mapping capability with their existing systems of record, uh, as we've mentioned. Um, in this case, it's uh, defining the data integration and inter interoperability model early, right? So uh, it's all about the data, right? It's the most important piece where breaking down current barriers to data sources uh, can provide immediate value. And uh, we certainly have packages and solutions that work at this level and also provide the, the end user application options. Uh, to be able to uh, to uh, hit the targeted use cases that, uh, and, and needs that folks have, and then, and then the third one is uh, you know some organizations uh, have challenges that uh, you know can benefit from from the force multiplier GIS in, uh, in all these three areas. Um, they have oftentimes already done a pretty thorough investigation of the technology, and they're ready to fully integrate. ArcGIS and their existing real property business uh, or facility management business practice. And you know, Esri and Penn may offer complete solution support in this regard to be able to uh, help folks in that capacity. And um, uh, we can work together um, with you guys or uh, uh, your existing contractors or integrators. So um, we certainly have uh, uh, cover each of these different options for getting started. All right, uh, let's see. It's about eight minutes left here, Pat. I think we have covered a good bit of ground in a short amount of time. Um, let us do this. Let's, let's go ahead and, and toggle over uh, before we move to Q&A and, and highlight some information on how folks can learn more about using GIS for real property and facility management in their, in their business or their practice. And a few things to note here. Um, uh, we actually are going to be making available a couple of different white papers. Um, these are going to be new white papers uh, that are uh, just uh, hitting the press or hitting, uh, becoming available, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. One is uh, facilities are mission critical, so sort of model right after the, the theme of uh, this talk today. Um, but also a, a sister or accompanying paper that's all about the data value proposition. I know many of you probably have some questions about that and want to kind of dig under the hood a little bit, and that's going to be a great paper uh, for doing that. Um, so Esri and PinBay obviously are, are both going to have web links for download. So either at the PinBay site uh, here as indicated or at Esri.com. We have Esri.com slash FM. 
And then, as Pat mentioned earlier, I believe, uh, the Esri Federal GIS Conference is coming up here in just uh, less than two weeks. And uh, so, and they will have a booth there where you can learn a lot more about the Envision product. And we will also have a uh, specific track uh, on federal real property. Uh, there will be a couple of sessions in there or performance development workshops. Um, one on this same topic as well as uh, one on um, the data, laying the data foundation. And in this case, we'll actually be joined by both federal agency uh, and industry experts who will be sitting down to present and discuss real world applications and value. And I think that is about that's about it, Pat. So um, let's go ahead right. and the time we have and move over to some Q and A. Great. Well, we got a we got a couple minutes here left for the Q and A. Uh, so keep the questions coming in, and again, we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, but a great one came in, and uh, Bill, I want to uh, pitch it to you to kick things off here. Um, that was just a question around the ROI. So can you explain a little bit more of uh, what the ROI or maybe cost justification is for facilities and GIS? Absolutely. That's front of mind for most people. It's ROI, it's cost justification, it really boils down to how you get executive sponsorship. Uh, and we've covered a lot of ground here, so I don't want to get into each solution, but I would just highlight some themes that apply here. Really, at the core of this, is it's about economies of scale. It's about efficiency, and it's about removing redundancies. And that, that ultimately will generate uh, improvements in workflows, authoritative data, because authoritative and accurate data is the key to making everything better. Uh, it also leverages, it, it, you get more bang for your buck for your investment in CAD, BIM, IWMS, CAFM, any acronym you can think of. By virtue of the fact that we integrate with those systems, those systems become more valuable. You get a better return on your investment in those systems as well. Obviously, sort of the day-to-day -day workflows uh, are faster and more accurate by virtue of these applications. And at the end of the day, public safety is sort of the intangible return on investment. Clearly, this, this has value to improving safety and, and security of facilities, and, and that's the intangible ROI. So the key to all this, as John has said, is, is start, and, and that helps you build the ROI case for your own organization. Great. No, that's perfect. That's such a, like you're saying, such an important way to get kind of that leadership support and all that too. So that's a great analysis and I think super helpful for our audience here today. Uh, so I want to uh, turn to a question, another question we got from the audience um, here, and that was uh, just around, you know, we've been talking about this for government uh, personnel. Um, and Benton, uh, is the tool that you were displaying that demo, is that available for, you know, non-government personnel as well? And, and how do they, uh, they use the tool? Yeah, it's, it's really uh, designed for use by any organization. We have uh, lots of federal, state, and local organizations, actually some casinos, school districts, uh, commercial organizations. So it's, it's designed not specifically for federal use, though some of the configurations tend to lean that way. It's really a tool for, for any size organization, whether it's a small local city or one with a global interest for you know, facilities all over the place. Great. So, and uh, John, now, uh, John, I want to turn to you for a, for a question that we got here uh, from the audience. Um, you know, is it, um, you know, the, the question we got here is around just executive uh, sponsorship. Um, so how do you kind of get that, and how important is that for, you know, implementing facilities in, in GIS? Uh, very good question, and, and one that my colleague Bill just uh, alluded to. And, um, you know, it, it's very important. You know, we find that uh, folks in the, in particular in the, uh, so it's not just the uh, directors of operations. Uh, we see a lot of folks in, in that role, but even all the way up to the, uh, the uh, COO or the OCFO office that um, are finding a lot of benefit, right, um, from being able to use uh, GIS and the decision support capabilities that come around. And, and, and honestly, that is a great place to begin because these are folks that are, at the end of the day, responsible for the the ultimate performance, right, of that portfolio and um, the, the recommendations for either the acquisition or, or building of new properties or the, the divestiture and disposal of, of those that they, they um, should be removing from their portfolios. So um, I'd say uh, absolutely it's very important at an operational level um, in, in middle management all the way down to the folks that are working day to day, but the executive uh, sponsorship is certainly always a, a key component. Great. 
And uh, so, guys, I think we got time for probably one uh, more question here, and it's going to come from our audience again. And, Bill, I'm going to uh, pitch it to you. Uh, the question is, at my agency, GIS is used for roads inventory, uh, but not for real proper, property inventory. Could I use GIS to inventory our buildings, dams, bridges, recreation sites, uh, et cetera? Uh, so, Bill, maybe you can uh, address that for our uh, attendee. Absolutely. I think that's a perfect example of force multiplication. You can use the infrastructure, uh, your systems, your data already, uh, and leverage that and just apply it to other parts of your organization indoors and out. And, and the key here is, and it's a cliche, I appreciate, but seeing is believing. What our experience is, is virtually always, once you start, once people see their organization, their data through a GIS, then there are other parts of the organization that, that want to get engaged. So the key is to start, and it sounds like you have a good foundation to launch from. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely, and uh, thanks so much, uh, Bill, for addressing that. So everyone, uh, I think we're out of time here for questions, uh, but just want to thank uh, you know John, uh, Bill, and Benton. Thanks so much for your presentation today. Uh, from the demo to all your comments, I thought it was fantastic, and really educate our audience around you know, how to use facilities data and really get the most out of uh, this information. Um, and thank you to our audience for attending today. Uh, we hope you learned something new and go back to your agencies and uh, can start making some impact. Uh, we can't thank you enough for the work you do in the public sector and your commitment to, to serve. Um, you know, we're here to help you. Uh, we love training you and learning uh, new ideas from you. So if you have any ideas, please send them to us at GovLoop. Uh, and thanks again to Esri for sponsoring this uh, event today. I thought it was a good training for all of us. Uh, so we'll be in touch, and uh, hopefully you'll catch your next training. And don't forget about the uh, user conference, too, coming up in a few weeks. Great opportunity. Uh, so thanks again, everyone, and uh, take care. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.